Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another Tower Defense Engine tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the Tile class, which is responsible for mainly determining a monster's path from the start, its spawn location, to the finished, our castle or our destination location, or whatever you wanted to call it. So the Tile is mostly responsible for using our A-star pathfinding, and we'll get into that in a future tutorial. Okay, so the first thing is to create a is to create a way to help our algorithm proceed as it's determining the which is the shortest path. And the way to do that is to create a public enumerated type for our region. What the what type of tile this is? Is it a passable tile? Is it the start of our path? Is it the finish? Is it a uh, block or a boulder or something that we cannot pass through? Or if it is already in the past path or is it in the closed list? So I'm going to call this display region. For a future tutorial, we will probably have these each individually being displayed in a certain way so we can see how the monster's path works. So just like everything I mentioned before, we need to have this in the enumerated type so it's going to be passable, start, finish, non-passable, in the path already, or in the closed list. So that is the display region and if you want to update your user interface to take advantage of these display regions you can have the path look a complete look completely different based on its region. So now we have another enumerated type to handle the tile type. Is it passable? or non-passable. Okay, so next up is the properties where we'll have to actually use these enumerated types and create a property of that. So public tile type let's just call it type and it'll be get and set public display region region it'll be get and set public point and then we need to add using Microsoft.exe framework at the top and then the map location where this tile is in the map and then we'll have get and private set. Now each tile has a list of tiles for an adjacency list. This is used for the A star. The A star algorithm. And we'll get and private set this as well. Now, A star uses heuristics in order to help its process, help determine which tile is the best fit. So the heuristics are using distance from start and distance to end, and we add that together to determine a cost for that tile. So public int distance from start get and set and then public int distance to end get and set and then each tile has a reference to its parent the way a star works is we go through we pick the best tile throughout the list until we get to the end tile 
and then we go in reverse and go to the tile's parents. So at the very end, we go to the end tile's parent, and then that parent, that tile's parent, and then we keep on going back until we reach the start node again. So public tile parent get and set public int tile code that's responsible for our other displaying get and private set the tile code is from our XML where we have our array of what the map will look like that's where we get the tile code now we actually need to calculate the heuristic so public int heuristic and then we just get return distance from start plus distance to end semicolon so we just return the addition of those two properties right there okay so now we have a couple of constructors location a point location and then the integer code that we represent it from the XML file so we have a map location property and we just set that to the location point we pass into the constructor we set the type to passable by default it is passable distance from start is zero and the tile code is equal to code and then we have the second constructor public tile tile type type point location and int code map location is equal to location the type of our tile is equal to the type we pass in distance from start is equal to zero and the tile code is equal to the code we pass in Okay, so we have an adjacency list, which is just a list of tiles, but we need a way to add tiles to that adjacency list. So public void add to adjacency list, and we need to add a tile t to that list. If t is equal to null, return. We for some reason a null tile was passed to this method we don't need to do anything another condition is if adjacency list is equal to null we need to create a new adjacency list and then we need to call adjacency list dot add and we need to pass it the tile item inside this call here One final thing we need to do is we need to override the toString method and we need to create a way to represent our tile in a string format. So we call public override and then we say we want to use the toString. So it's public override string toString and we return map location that two string plus quote a colon end quote plus adjacency list dot count plus quote space c colon end quote plus tile code dot two string 
open and close in parentheses, and a semicolon. So what this will do is if you're ever debugging and you need to be, you need to make sure that the tiles are working correctly, it'll give you its location. So if you're following it on a piece of paper or somehow if you're following the algorithm and want to make sure everything's working proper, correctly, you can check its location so you know what tile you're, you need to focus on. The number of tiles in its adjacency list, so somehow your adjacency list is not being calculated, it'll have a count of zero, and then you it'll show your tile code. So you can be sure that the data transferred between the XML to the tile object is correct. All right, so that's it for the tile class. You can go ahead and save this, and next we'll work on the path class. So I hope to see you next time.